Today we're going to be talking about a tibial tubercle transfer. Historically we've used metal screws to fixate our tibial tubercle transfers, but today we're going to be using osteofibers. We're going to be using 4-0 headless compression screws. The benefit of that is that this material will actually turn into new bone over time. So we're going to be using the Kinemed MD3T system, which is a uh, nice low profile system. So this is where we're going to actually focus on now the osteofiber screws. So we're going to be using 4-0 headless screws. So I'm actually going to countersink to start. So, and I, and I always plan on about four millimeters there and that will take care of our headless screws. So I'm just countersinking right now. And once again, I'm just going through these screw holes that have already been created. And sometimes you're going to find a little periostom or a little tendon distally. That's okay. It's a very wide footprint once again. So it's basically we've done there. So yeah, so now we'll, we're going to actually drill. And you can use it, you can use the guide. There's actually a guide that we can use also. I'm going to just freehand this right now. And I'm, I'm, I'm now feeling that far cortex. Okay. I'm going to tap. The great thing about this tap is that we actually have graduated lines. So I can, I can get my depth off of this. Conversely, you can also use a regular depth gauge and things like that if you're more comfortable doing that. But the nice thing about this tap is we can actually get to the point. And so what I would be doing is under floor, I would make sure I'm in the right spot. And once you get it started, I think the benefit of doing this by hand and not with uh, power is that you can feel that far cortex a little easier. Whereas if you do it under power, sometimes you can't feel where you're coming out on that second cortex. If it's very hard bone, sometimes you have to drill or you have to tap twice and I'm right there. So this is a small specimen. So we actually, after we countersunk, we measured this to a 34 millimeter depth. So we're gonna grab our 34 millimeter headless osteofiber compression screw. I think this is easier to do under um, hand power. Um, you can really feel that posterior cortex and there we go. I'm getting a nice bite and it's, it's very, it may not be picking it well on the video, but I'm getting a very nice gentle squeak. I've got great compression. I can feel the graft going or the, I can feel the bone block going down and I'm down and it is, it is flush with the surface. I'm completely flush. So you can see that's completely flush. It's countersunk. And there is no hard, there's going to be no hardware irritation here. So if you ever feel like you need to repeat putting your screw in, let's say you've stripped the screw, you didn't measure correctly, a real benefit of actually utilizing the osteofiber, you can actually drill through the osteofiber. So if we're going to, if we ever have to repeat things, it's very easy. It's not like you have to take metal out or anything like that. So now that we've done that, we're actually going to remove our provisional K wire and we're going to do the second screw. Good. So under floor I would be doing this in a lateral view. In this instance I'm using a 3.6 millimeter drill. Alternatively though like we talked about I could put in my K wire and drill that bicortically. You want to be very careful so you're not going too posterior. We don't want to plunge into the neurovascular structures. So once I feel myself posterior cortex this through. And then I'm going to use my tap once again. We, it has measurement marks on it so we can measure off the tap itself. Find its way. Easier to do under hand, I, once again. I think you can find that far cortex. It's a little more tactile feedback. And there I am. I'm right at it. I'm measuring. Once again, this is a small specimen. This looks like, once again, it's a little wider at this part of the the depth's going to be a little bit more, and why don't we go up to a 38 on this one, likely. Once again, you could place your K-wire so that you could go over the top with the cannulated screw. But in this instance, we're going to go straight down. Once again, you can do this under fluoroscopy so you can see exactly where you're at and you have the right trajectory. So now we're at the headless part and we're going to get that nice compression. And there it goes. 
and that is nice and countersunk. And on this one, I'm actually probably a, and I'm getting a nice squeak, I'm about a millimeter under the surface. So that's not gonna be prominent hardware. We know that this is gonna be right where we want it to be. So I don't know how well you can see this, but you can see that we are countersunk with our Osseo screws. This has great compression. If I try to actually take, say I take the osteotome, I cannot, I cannot pry that out. We've got great compression here. And one of the fun things that you're going to see is on your post-operative films, you're going to be able to see the osteotomy site, but you're not going to be able to see any metal screws. And it's one of the really fun things to be able to see with this system. And so I, this has been my absolute go-to one. I mean, I've got this pry and I cannot pry that osteotomy site out. So one, the MD3T system is, is second to none. I think it, it, one, it's safer, it's reproducible. You can correct it in multiple planes, which is exactly what we're looking for. In this case, we medialized and distalized. But with the osteofiber screws, we don't have to worry about any kind of metal, any kind of heart prominence. And what's amazing is that over the next number of months to couple of years, that osteofiber is gonna turn into brand new bone.